Welcome to All About Art. My name is Alexandra, and I'm an art historian, curator, and writer. Within this podcast, topics relating to art history, cultural policy, the art sector, as well as a large range of other art-related topics will be covered. Conducting critical discussions, having entertaining exchanges, or just enjoying some relaxing chats? All About Art is where you'll find it all. Join me in exploring and developing cultural discourse. Welcome to another episode of All About Art. If you follow me on social media, you will know that at the beginning of September, I traveled to Vienna to co-curate a room in one of the city's biggest art fairs called Parallel. In this episode, I want to describe my experience taking part in an art fair for the very first time, and I also want to talk about all the fun things, but also all about the logistics, the learning curves, and other stuff that comes with the experience. First off, I will tell you about the art fair itself, because this is an incredibly interesting topic. I want to go into the background of the fair and what the fair stands for. I will then go into the actual project and why I was invited to curate, and then I want to go on to tell you about the process in general, the timeline, and as I mentioned before, I want to talk about some of the lessons that I've learned from it all. So, Parallel Vienna is not like other art fairs, like, for example, Freeze or Art Basel. So if you were picturing that in your head when I first mentioned it, you can forget that image. Instead, picture it a lot less glamorous, but a lot cooler. I will read a little bit from their website to give you an idea of what they stand for. So I quote, Parallel Vienna presents young and emerging as well as established artistic practices and brings together art initiatives of every kind, art associations, galleries, project spaces, off spaces, and artist spaces, both Austrian and international, all under one roof. The reason why this was so exciting for myself and for my colleagues is because we didn't get a booth to curate, but instead we got an entire room within the building where this year's fair took place. But more on that later. Unlike other art fairs, Parallel prides itself in being a hybrid between art fair, exhibition platform, and artist studio. It unites exhibitions made by commercial galleries, off spaces, and art associations, along with solo presentations by selected artists and curators. You can present a statement, and they differentiate between gallery statements, artist statements, curator statements, and project statements, which was the category that we were in. Our presentation was composed of two artists who asked C20 to come and curate. For clarification, C20 is the Association for International Curatorial Practice, and it was co-founded by myself and my colleague, Paula Marshalek. One of the reasons why I find the art fair so intriguing is because it goes hand in hand with methods of cultural regeneration, in a sense. What I've noticed is that Austria, and more specifically Vienna, does a really great job at hosting arts and cultural events in older buildings that had been unused for a few years. The specific location of Parallel took place in the old Semmelweis Women's Clinic, which was originally named after Ignaz Semmelweis, a Hungarian physicist and scientist. He was described as the savior of mothers, having discovered that many frequent causes of death in new mothers right after giving birth could be drastically reduced through the use of hand disinfection, which is something that is common practice today. The art fair was set up in two of the buildings on the site, and so artists, galleries, curators, and other art professionals had the chance to showcase their creativity throughout four stories with dozens of rooms on each floor. The clinic closed a while ago, however, it was really, really interesting to see what was left behind. A friend of mine and wonderful gallerist Sophia Vonier had a room that was the old laboratory. I went to go see her space, and when I did, I discovered a drawer with an old label on it which read Blutgruppen, which translated in English means blood groups. It was really interesting to see the remnants from what the space used to be and how it had been repurposed for culture. It was very interesting to see works of art within the context of something 
that you wouldn't expect in a way that you see the label of the drawer that says Blutgruppen and you think about what had happened in the room in the past, in the years when the Semmelweis Clinic was actually a women's clinic. And then you recontextualize that and think about the artworks within the space. And it was quite a powerful thing. And I found it personally even more powerful when the artworks had something to do with the female experience, which was the case with not only our installation, but also the installation of many, many others who exhibited at the fair. If you want to see more of Sophia's space and the artists that she exhibited in the room that I was just talking about, I have linked the gallery's Instagram in the description, and I do really suggest giving her a follow. Anyway, it was a really exciting process to participate from beginning to end. I ended up taking part because in early 2020, as I mentioned earlier in this episode, I co-founded an association which is based in Vienna, and it's called C20. This time around, we were asked by Julia Bugram, one of the artists in our show, to come on board for project assistance and curation, as she had taken the initiative to apply to participate in the art fair. We then also asked artist Gloria Dimmel to participate, as we thought that the works by Julia and the works by Gloria would create a wonderful exhibition and ignite very interesting conversations. As I just mentioned, Julia applied to participate in the art fair. For this specific fair, there were multiple statements, which is also something that I briefly touched on earlier. You could do a gallery statement, a project statement, an artist statement, or a curator statement. For the first two, there was an application process as well as a participation fee should your proposal be chosen to exhibit. For the latter two options, participants were invited to exhibit, and as far as I'm aware, they did not pay a participation fee. I want to be transparent by telling you that the net price of participating as a project statement was 750 euros, because I think that this is important information and it could be useful for you listening, should you be interested in taking part in an art fair yourself. And honestly, we really should talk about money more. The exhibition was absolutely amazing, as we showed drawings and etchings by Julia, as well as plaster casts of vulvas made by Gloria. Yes, you heard me right. We exhibited plaster casts of vulvas. I have put links to social media as well as C20's website and the artist's websites so that you can have a look while you listen. One thing that I realized when showing these kinds of works is that you really need to be prepared for a variety of reactions. As a curator, as someone standing in the room, I really had to be mentally and emotionally prepared to have sometimes even difficult discussions. For example, we had a man come in and ask us if he was allowed to touch the vulvas. After receiving our answer, which was clearly no, he angrily said that he finds it very unfortunate and doesn't agree with the way that we do things. We also had a man come in and ask us why the vulvas are made of plaster and not of silicone, because if they were silicone, at least he could use them. Yeah, and you ask me why I'm a feminist? Gross old white men are one reason. <laughs> anyway, we also had people come in and say that it was the best room that they had been in so far. They said that they felt comfortable and that they were happy to have discussions with us because all of us, we were a total of four, make a conscious effort to tell each and every one of our visitors about the exhibition. Of course, diminishing energy levels didn't allow us to tell everyone everything, but if there is one thing I really learned that gave us a huge advantage at the fair was that we were multiple people, for one, which meant that we had the capacity to really talk to around 90% of the people who walked into our space. This allowed visitors to really engage with the works of art on display, and that in turn had a really positive effect on the viewers as well as on the artists and on us as the curators. In addition to the verbal communication about the works, something that I found really good that we did was another form of communication, and that was through things like business cards, postcards, and exhibition texts. We had the advantage of having quite a deep windowsill in the space that we were using, so we used that as a table, so to speak, where we put all of our cards and we had the exhibition texts in both English and German, 
as well as other things. For example, Gloria, who does the plaster casts of vulvas, she also sells not only her services to cast your vulva and to have that experience, but you can also purchase a DIY set should you not feel comfortable doing it in front of other people. And in addition to that, she also made a game called Mumuri or Pussy Pairs, which is like the game Memory, where you have to match cards to one another visually, but with images of the plaster casts of vulvas that she's made throughout the past. These were also little bits and bobs that we were able to have on display within our space that were fun conversation starters for people, but also if someone decided to purchase one of these things, that was another way in which we were financially supporting the artists who were participating because income is always important. But having the exhibition texts on display and for people to take with them, as well as business cards and the postcards with contact information of the artists on the back, is really important to have because people can take the information with them, especially if they're at an art fair where they have been seeing hundreds of rooms already and they may not have the headspace to take in your art at that moment, but they might be interested in following up afterwards. That's why written works are also very important to include and to be able to give to people so that they can take them with. Another thing that I found useful to know is that it's really helpful to write up a press release and send it to press contacts, should you have them. I have to admit, we did not get around to it until it was a little bit late. However, it is something I will prioritize and keep in mind for the next time around. When it came to the install, it was really important for me to be hands-on and get involved. We painted the floors. And we used wall paint because it was more affordable and it only needed to hold for a week. We drilled holes, we tidied up the walls, and we cleaned the windows. Don't underestimate the power of clean windows, especially when you're using a space that has not been used in a while and may really, really need it. We were also on the top floor in the very back corner of the building, so we had a gorgeous view People would come in and say, oh, what a lovely view. And then we'd be cheeky and say, yes, it's beautiful outside and on the inside. But it was a small detail that actually some visitors even mentioned. So yeah, don't underestimate the details. If you are an aspiring curator and you're listening, I just want to say, don't be afraid to say what you think because you're there for a reason. So be open about your opinions. For me, curating something with a contemporary artist or artists is a very collaborative process, and both Julia and Gloria were very open to all of my suggestions and input, such as painting the floor or hanging works in certain ways, even if it meant spending three hours on something to then change it up afterwards and go in a completely different direction, if that's what felt right. So we had a total of four days to install from Thursday to Sunday. And then on Monday, there were specific hours for the press to come and visit, which, I'll be honest with you, wasn't very busy. On Tuesday was the private view and the vernissage, where I ended up speaking for nine hours straight, and I didn't have a voice at the end of the day. From Wednesday through until Sunday, there was always a very steady flow of visitors, but I have to admit it did pick up on the weekend for anyone who is interested in the timeline. <laughs> I really wish we had counted the visitors as it would have been a very interesting thing to keep track of. That is also something that I will do at the next art fair I participate in. Of course, that is depending on the actual fair and the whole setup of things, because I think that if you are curating a booth, I don't even know if they do curate booths per se at commercial art fairs. I think that this was a very different situation because of the format that Parallel takes, which, as I said earlier in this episode, is kind of a hybrid between different things. And it's not necessarily a straight art fair, as you would imagine, like I said, Freeze or Art Basel. But yeah, those are just a couple of small details that I thought about that I would like to include in my process next time so that I can approach any type of future art fair endeavors in a very informed way. What I really appreciated about our space and about what we were exhibiting and how we were doing things is that it felt very comfortable. 
I think that we made a conscious effort to try and break down any type of psychological barriers in entering an art space and having it be somewhere that you need to be quiet and proper and not say anything, not question things, which is honestly the exact opposite of what we love to do in the arts. The biggest thing that I learned in my art history degree is that you go and you ask questions and you start discussions and you're never expected to know everything. And I think that the space that the parallel offered in this older building, in a space that's not a white cube space, it's not somewhere that's very serene and pristine, but instead it's loud and it's it's different and it's fun. And I feel like we had our room suitable to that type of vibe because people would come in and especially women I think that we made an effort to create a safer space for them to come in because not only were we offering actual appointments to get a plaster cast of your vulva which was a very fun thing to do but we also wanted to make it comfortable for women to come in. For example, we had someone come in and her child was crying and she said that her child was hungry. And we said, well, would you like something to drink? Would you like to sit down? Would you like to breastfeed? We have our chair here. Please come and take a seat. Come and feel comfortable. You can sit behind this little partition in our space because of the planned appointments for casting vulvas. And so that was something that we could use to make women feel more comfortable when they were taking care of their child. We also had someone come in, a mother of a young girl, and the young girl was starting to get a bit tired and she needed a little bit of energy. So again, we offered them a seat, we offered them something to drink, we talked to them a little bit about the artworks, and that was something that was really beneficial and we were really really happy to hear the feedback from the mom later on saying that not only did she get some education about female genitalia but also she got some more information on art history and her daughter had some time to regenerate a little bit of energy in order for them to be able to go and look at a couple of other rooms. And we were really happy to hear that. It made us happy that people felt comfortable to come in, to sit down and to have discussions, as well as look at the art and experience the creativity that our artists had presented in our space. All in all, it was an incredibly successful two weeks in Vienna for me, from helping with the installation to co-curating to learning about so many new things and meeting some amazing people. The very last thing that I want to say to anyone who wants to participate in an art fair in the future is please make sure that you take the time for yourself to go through and see other people's work. It's really, really hard to step away from your own room when people are enjoying and engaging. However, it is always beneficial and enjoyable for you yourself to be able to have the same experience with other contributors. Thank you to Julia, Gloria, and Paula for making our very first art fair experience together so great, and I'm really, really proud of the work that we did and what we accomplished. Fingers crossed we can do another one soon. I hope that you enjoyed listening, and I would be very happy if you would get in touch via email or Instagram or LinkedIn, however you want to contact me, and let me know if you are looking to participate in an art fair or if you've participated in an art fair, and tell me how your experience was. I'd absolutely love to know. As always, thank you so much for listening. And that is it for today on All About Art. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave me a rating or a review as it helps more people discover the show. Also, feel free to share with your friends or if you share on social media, tag me and get in touch. Thank you so much for listening. 